Have you ever wanted to use a new feature of JavaScript before every browser supported it? That's what Babel is all about. In this episode of What the Stack, we're going to look at what Babel is, how you can use it, and some of the incredible things it can do for your JavaScript workflow. My name is Steve, and this is Strezabyte, a channel focused on awesome technology. Let's get started. If you've paid any attention to JavaScript in the last few years, you've surely seen that it's been going through some pretty radical changes lately. Whether it's promises, arrow functions, the spread operator, async await, or the long-awaited arrival of classes as first-class citizens, there are a ton of new things you can do with JavaScript. And there are a lot of ideas being explored that don't fit directly into the standard track of JavaScript, like the JSX syntax pioneered by React, or the strong typing annotations from projects like Flow and TypeScript. But as with all things JavaScript, you're constrained by the browsers. Browser support for modern features has gotten better recently, but it's never going to be perfect. You can patch in polyfills or use little shell scripts to rewrite your code, but those can be prone to breaking and people tend to patch them in and forget about them, leading to dead code many years down the road, long after those hacks are necessary. Babel is a solution for this problem by taking modern JavaScript and compiling it down to a form that can be understood in different environments. Babel is built on a plugin system that parses your modern JavaScript into an abstract syntax tree, or AST, and rewrites it into a version that can be interpreted by your browser. To set this up, install the Babel CLI package and save it as a dev dependency. To show off how this works, we'll take a look at one of my favorite new features of modern JavaScript, arrow functions. Arrow functions work just like normal functions in JavaScript, but with a much lighter syntax and better handling of the this keyword. Here's an example file, which I'll save as arrow.js. We'll need to add a plugin for transforming arrow functions into the old style of JavaScript functions that we all know and love. The name of the plugin that we need, and don't get scared off by it, is Babel Plugin Transform ES2015 Arrow Functions. Save this as a dev dependency. We can now run Babel on our arrow.js file to get the new output. And if we look at our new output, we can see that it has been transformed to use the old style of JavaScript functions. If we leave off the plugins field as an argument to the Babel command line, it won't actually do that transformation. That's because on its own, Babel really doesn't do much for us. It needs plugins to do almost all of its work. Babel's plugins are pretty small, so usually one plugin will only cover one feature or one sort of domain of features. That means we need a lot more plugins to support all of the modern JavaScript features. And as you can expect, it would get pretty old pretty fast if we had to list out every single feature we wanted, especially since new ones get added all the time. So Babel also has a concept called presets, which let you specify which features you want to use a little more broadly. If you want to target a specific year of new features, you can use presets like ES2015, ES2016, and ES2017. If you're building a React-based application, there's a React preset which adds supports for the JSX syntax, and you can use the flow type system for strong typing with the flow preset. But one of my favorite presets is called env. With it, you can specify what level of compatibility you need for the targets that you intend to support, and Babel will automatically install the appropriate transformation plugins. So for example, you can specify you want to target the last two releases of all the major browsers. It will add the necessary transforms today, and then next year, or the year after, or whenever, when all the major browsers support all those features natively, those transforms can be automatically removed, and you can rely on native browser functionality. And you don't have to do anything but npm install to get that to work. It works with desktop browsers, standard browsers on iOS and Android, different versions of Node.js, and projects targeting the Electron desktop app environment. Once you have a number of these plugins and presets installed, you can keep adding them to that command line, but in almost all cases, people put their Babel configuration into a .babelrc file at the root of their project. Inside of it, you can specify which plugins and presets to use, which files to ignore, and different settings for different targets. You can also put this information in your package.json file, but this is done a little less frequently. Many projects also integrate Babel with a bundler, like Webpack, as part of their compilation pipeline, but you can still use Babel by itself. At the very least though, you should definitely add a build script for it to your package.json file to make things easier for yourself and for anybody else who works on your project. Babel really doesn't have that much in the way of competition. For a while, Google had a similar project called Tracer that accomplished the same goal, but it has largely been left behind by the community and by its maintainers. You can of course choose not to use this tool, which does add some complexity to your development life, but you won't get any of its advantages. 
If you're building a Node.js app, you can also use the babel-node project, which hooks into the require method and compiles code in your app on the fly before it gets executed. This is a great way to speed up your development cycle, but it does come at the cost of some performance, so make sure to do a proper build of your Node.js app before it hits production. So that's Babel in a nutshell. At its core, it transforms code from one form into another by parsing it, transforming the parse syntax tree, and writing out the transform code. It's built with the intent of supporting modern JavaScript features in legacy browsers, and enabling awesome new tools like JSX and strong typing systems like Flow. To me, it's an essential tool that helps me write better code, and I wouldn't imagine starting a project without it. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below how Babel has improved your workflow, or what is stopping you from giving it a shot. And also tell me what other kinds of tools you want to see on What the Stack. If this helped you get a better understanding of how Babel can be useful, drop a like down below and subscribe for more videos about programming, servers, home automation, gaming, PCs, and more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.